welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Christy. I'm a homeschool mom of three kids, ages 10, four, and two. And today I'm gonna to be talking all about how we do nature study in our homeschool. This video is a collaboration video with my friend Tasha over at Tasha Pivots. If you have not heard of Tasha or know her channel, you're missing out. She is an amazing mama and I get so much peace just watching her videos. She is so encouraging. She has a really lovely homeschool style and I love her videos so much. So today we both are going to be talking about how we do nature study in our homeschool. And I think that nature study is something you don't really know about until you start homeschooling. At least I didn't. Before I started homeschooling, I had no idea what nature study was. I'd never heard of it before. And then I started homeschooling and all of a sudden all you hear about is nature study. The way that I approach nature study in our homeschool is very organically, very naturally. I know that there are a ton of nature curriculums out there, really in-depth, year-long nature study programs. For me, I just, and I'm not saying I'll never use a nature curriculum, I just personally don't want another curriculum to use for something that I feel like should come so naturally. So the way that we approach nature study is a lot of just playing outside, to be honest. There is so much exploration that comes from just letting your kids play outside in the mud. Let them climb and explore, visit some ponds and that sort of thing. Just be in nature. That is the first step, I feel like, in nature study. So the second step, I feel like, for nature study is to teach our children to be observers. And I think that sometimes kids can be kind of caught up in whatever they're doing, running around outside. Sometimes they don't notice the little things in nature. They don't always notice the mushrooms growing on the side of the tree or the roly-poly in the ground or the little flowers budding on the, the trees or in the grass. For us, when we go on a nature walk, I definitely take the time to be intentional with pointing out things that I personally see as an adult so that they start noticing noticing things around them as well. I will point out sounds of birds that I hear because sometimes I feel like they're being so loud or they're talking so much that they're not really listening to the nature sounds around them. So that's a big one is sounds. So I'll point out bird sounds or if there's like the other day we were walking and we heard this squeaking. We discovered it was a toad getting eaten by a snake, spotting things on the ground, beetles or flowers or pine cones or whatever it is, sap running down a tree, something like that is, is helpful in training them how to do that. So for nature journaling, we do it very relaxed approach to nature journaling. I will sometimes take our nature journals with us and they're just little sketch pads that I got at the dollar store. They're nothing fancy. I think just sketch paper is fine. And we take them with us sometimes on our, on our walks and I will just kind of approach them and be like, if you see something that inspires you to sketch it, let me know and we'll get the books out and we'll sit and, and draw it. Or sometimes we'll be walking and we'll spot something cool and I'll say, hey, would you like to sketch that in your nature journal? Or would you like to collect that leaf for your nature journal? And sometimes they are all for it and, and really into it. And then other times they just would rather not. And that's totally fine. I think that keeping it very relaxed and organic is the best way to approach it. When I want a more structured nature study or I want something to give me ideas or inspiration of topics to talk about. I do love unit studies. Some of the unit studies that I love are simple studies. Their nature studies are beautiful. Right now we're working through Meadow Creature. It's a literature-based nature study based on the book Among the Meadow People by Clara Dinglingham Pearson. And this book is such a sweet book. It's an older book published in the 1800s, but they have since kind of revised and republished it. And the edition that I have is from New West Press. And I highly encourage you if you're going to get this book or any of the others in the series, that is the way to go. They have a beautiful edition. And so this book is just cute little nature stories. And they're like a fiction-based nature story about a creature of some kind. 
and they're cute, they're fun. They're kind of like an Aesop fable in the way that they have a lesson to teach the child at the end of the story. They're really short and sweet. They're enjoyable to listen to. My kids really enjoy the book so far. So for Meadow Creatures, I didn't print the entire thing because it's not really something that the kids need to look at. It's just for me to read. So I typically just read the PDF from my phone or tablet. However, I did print a couple lessons to show you what it looks like, but they're just very simple. It's very straightforward. You read the chapter in Among the Meadow People. You can have your child do a coloring page because she also included a ton of coloring pages for every creature we're learning about. So I put together little coloring books for each child and they just sit and color the creature for the day while I read and then there's different things that you can kind of expand upon. So after you read the chapter you ask the students to recall what they heard about it or what they read which is an important skill to make sure they're retaining the story and then they have a extension for older students and they'll suggest like using a field guide or something and look up a specific creature and draw a picture of that creature labeling parts if it's possible, and just kind of diving a little deeper into the study of that specific creature, which I love because I love being able to expand upon interests. So we have been loving simple studies. We actually have the North American Animals Unit to do as well. So for the winter time, I purchased a winter nature journal study from Raising Up Wild Things, and she has an Etsy shop. She has a bunch of little nature studies, and this one being winter, I thought was very interesting because I feel like it's harder to study nature in winter, like at least if you live in a very cold climate, there's just not as much going on as far as nature and not as much to explore explore or so you think. So this winter nature journal is really beautiful. It studies things like trees that are sleeping. It studies things like hibernation and the animals that bury under the snow. It talks about birds in the winter time, winter birds that stay around and don't migrate and how to take care of birds in the winter. It gives you some creative craft ideas to kind of make bird feeders and that kind of thing for the birds in the winter. It also talks about constellations because you know in the winter the constellations that we can see are different than what we see in the summertime. So there is a lot to see in the winter and I think sometimes we forget about that. So I love this winter nature journal because it really helps kind of inspire me for those colder months. Another place that I love to go for nature study resources are just like printables from Etsy. Fiddlesticks has really, really great nature resources. Um, Homeschool Compass has a lot of nature resources. I bought a nature bundle from the Hidden Way back in the spring. And you can look, because there are creators that create all these bundles with different shops that contribute, and it's like one price for a bunch of different resources. And so sometimes I'll go in there and just print off things and just make a unit study out of it. Other things that I love to do is just figure out what my kids are interested in. If they come to me with a question, like a few days ago, my daughter asked about tide pools. So I went and I printed a bunch of tide pools from that mega bundle that I had already purchased. And we pulled some of the seashore books that we have in our home library and we just did a study about tide pools. So it's just following their interests asking the questions, letting them ask the questions, and following the rabbit trails. I encourage you to follow as many rabbit trails as you can. Really dive in to whatever they're curious about. There's a ton of like little resources that you can kind of find around that are really inexpensive or free even, and just kind of piece things together to kind of expand upon a specific topic. You can do science units. You know, we use a lot of the units from The Good and the Beautiful for our science curriculum for the year and my daughter usually picks those out and a lot of times they're a nature one because that's what she's drawn to. She loves learning about animals and nature. So if you can kind of you know, have a combination of science and nature together, that's another way to fit nature study into your homeschool without making it this whole separate thing. There's a lot to learn about our natural world and just being in it is how discoveries are made, exploration. You know, nature study starts with exploration. And if we give our kids lots of opportunities to just explore the natural world, that is what true nature study is. Looking at beautiful books about 
nature, you know, getting at Google and doing a Google search on what kind of bug something is. That's all forms of nature study. It doesn't have to be this really structured thing. It can be very organic and natural. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that it kind of made nature study a little bit less overwhelming and just know that you can do nature study very simply. Don't forget to check out Tasha's video. I'm sure she has a ton of information for you as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.